Good evening again, everybody. This is Cherie speaking at the Commonwealth of Learning. I'm standing in for Christina today. She's on leave, but I'd like to thank her very much for all of her arrangements. It's made it really easy for me. Um, just to let you know, we are recording the session for today as usual, so we can get this um, session in the hands of more people after the webinar, and you can also share it with your teams. Um, just a few reminders before we get started. Uh, you would see on your screen for GoToMeeting how to mute your line. So if somebody else is speaking, we kindly remind you to click on that green button so that we can have um, silence for the other person who's currently speaking. If you have comments or questions while the speaker is uh, talking, you can type in the chat box as well that you see on your screen. And we will be sharing the recording of this webinar afterwards as well. So um, just a quick reminder for those of you on um, social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or anything else that you use, please do um, connect with us at Girls Inspire on Twitter and at Cole 4 d um, And you can use the hashtag that you see on the screen for financial inclusion or ending child marriage as well. So without further ado, I'd like to pass it on to Mrs. Frances Ferreira, who's the Women and Girls Senior Advisor here at the Commonwealth of Learning to make the welcoming remarks. Thank you very much, Cherise. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, I'm very pleased this morning to introduce to you our guest speaker, Ms. Chetna Sina from India. Chetna is an economist, a farmer and activist and the founder of and president of the Mandeshi Bank, a micro enterprise cooperative development bank with six branches, branches whose clients are women earning an average, including women earning an average of 40 Indian rupees a day. Chetna founded the Mandeshi Foundation to empower and train women and self-help groups in business, entrepreneurism, property rights, and technology. The foundation currently operates in Maharashtra and Karnataka, but has regulatory approval to operate throughout India. It also partners with global organizations, including the Commonwealth of Learning. Messina established the Women's Chamber of Commerce to offer support of, to female entrepreneurs and a business school for rural women to provide training in entrepreneurial skills. And since 1996, she has been organizing women in the rural areas of the Maharashtra in the fight for land and property rights and launched a community radio station providing a platform for sharing information. Taking into account Chetna's great contribution to the holistic cause of female empowerment, India's Ministry of Women and Child Development has nominated her it's a member of the governing board of the Rashtriya Mahila Kosh. The Schwab Foundation for Social Entrepreneurship, a sister organization of the World Economic Forum, announced Chetna as the winner of the 2013 India Social Entrepreneur of the Year. Chetna received the 2005 Janki Devi Baja Purashkar Award for Rural Entrepreneurship she has lifetime membership with Ashoka Innovations for the Public and was selected for the 2002-2003 Yale University World Fellows Program. In 2013, Chetna Gala Sina presented at the TEDx Gateway uh, in Mumbai. Cole's publication, Women and Leadership in Open and Distance Learning and Development, also features Chetna as one of the author, authors. Ladies and gentlemen, you will agree with me that with her passion for women empowerment, the road she built for financial inclusion of women, there is no better person than Ms. Chetna Sina to speak to us on this topic this morning. Join me in welcoming the phenomenal Chetna G. Sina from Mumbai. Uh, I think she's speaking from Aswat, I'm not so sure. Welcome Chetna G. Over to you, Sharit. Thank you very much, Francis, and a warm welcome to you, Chetna Ji. I'm, I'm moving to your first slide now, and please feel free to get started whenever you're ready. Thank you. Sure. Hi, Francis, and hi, everybody. 
Uh, thank you so much for providing. Yeah. Thank you so much for providing an opportunity to share my experiences, particularly on financial inclusion for women. It's uh, interesting that uh, Mandishi started the bank, got the license in 1996. And when you talk about banking, low income group women, generally people talk about microcredit. But actually, my experience is very different. Uh, I'm located in a, a very small town, very remote location in Maharashtra, which is called Maswar, where majority, I mean, it's a drought area. And uh, I never thought that, you know, I will start a women's bank or will do what I'm doing now. Uh, I had never planned that way. But actually, uh, women from my village, they came forward and they said that uh, we want to do savings. And my obvious response to that was that, do you earn? Because these women who are street vendors, and one of the women, Kantabai, she said that I want to do savings because I stay on the street. And in summer, it is so much hot and the temperature goes beyond 45 degrees. And I'm, I need a shelter and I want to save to buy, uh, buy a plush sheet so that I can, I can have a shelter for my family. I realized that, you know, women like her, Kanta Bai, who wants, to, who wants to plan their lives. And that is the reason why they want to do savings. So... I went with her to different banks, but banks were not ready to open her account because she was not an affordable client. So then I thought if banks are not opening the account, why not start a bank? And that's how Mandeshi Bank was started. And it was, of course, a challenging part was to get the license because these women were non-literate and license were rejected for that. It was interesting. I mean, when license was rejected, I went with these women to Mumbai, where the Federal Reserve Bank of India is. And these women said that we want to do savings. We are not asking for any grant or subsidies from the government. We want to plan their lives. And they said that we are not, not literate, but that does not mean that we cannot count. And this, I mean, I've, I've shared this story so many times, but I still would like to say that, you know, these women who have never been to the school, they are going to the Federal Reserve Bank office, talking to the director and telling, challenging him that you are considering that we cannot count because we are non-literate, but tell us to calculate the interest of any principal amount. And if we fail to do that, don't issue the banking license. Actually, I felt when these women were talking that they were so clear what they wanted and they never wanted anything from the government. They wanted just an opportunity to do savings. We got the license and Mandishi Bank is operating for last 20 years with these women through whom I have learned so many lessons which I would like to share with you. Can you have a second slide? Can we move to this? Yeah. So you can see in the slide that who are these women? These women are vegetable vendors. And it was interesting when we started the bank. You know, when you when you want to provide an opportunity to low-income group people, the first challenge they have is that they do not have a luxury of mobility. What I mean is that, you know, even to walk extra miles or to go somewhere or go to the banking, they would lose the work, their working day. So women were very clear. We got the banking license, but they said that we cannot come to the bank. So then the, when we got the license, my first lesson was that poor can save. It's not that poor cannot save. And if poor people want to save, mainstream banking sector should open the door for them which means that should design the credit product in such a saving product in such a way that they can save. 
and when we got the license women were very clear that if we come to the bank we lose our working day we have to walk miles and come to the bank so the bank decided that if women cannot come to the bank bank will go to them and that's how we started a doorstep banking you can see in the slide very clearly that one of our field officer is having a device and is our women are saving and she is giving the receipt this is now of course now we have a much more advance on a pilot basis we are providing this doorstep banking and our field agents have a smartphone why i am talking about this technology also that actually when you talk of inclusion and when you talk of poor people the first thing which is very important for them is that their hard earned money should be in their control and many of our women they used to say that you know if they save and if they have a physical passbook they their family members can see can have an access of how much they are saving and they were very clear that you sometimes our husbands they do take away our hard earned money and spend in liquor drinking and we want we are saving for our children's education and so they were they were demanding mandishi bank that we should provide them instead of physical passbook provide them a solution where they can have a control on the savings so then mandishi decided that why don't we have a electronic passbook can you show the other slide the next slide please you can see one of our women having these uh, smart cards these are the cards which has a chip and women have all their saving data on these cards now of course after demonetization we have much more advanced solution also but before coming to that i would just like to explain that you know people we would always think that these women who are non literate how will they how will they use these cards and we also had the same question and we were trying to explain our women that you know when are you are using the cards you should remember the pin number our women said that you know we don't want pin number find some other solution and we were trying to explain that them that you should not disclose your pin number when you are using the car atm card or a debit card but women were very clear they said that you know anybody can get an access to our pin number also so you find other solution so now we have instead of pin number we have a biometric can you imagine that with and and women were so happy when this biometric solution was found and they made this comment that comment that anybody can steal our pin number but nobody can steal our thumb which which is so clear that when these women if they get an opportunity of savings if they get an opportunity of credit they have a control on their finance they decide where to spend money not only that but with mandishi bank my experience was that when we design these cards women used to come and they also used to talk about that you know we want the saving uh, we want the saving product where every year it get, it should get mature at the time of the when the schools are opening and my obvious question was that generally women ask for the saving product one year saving product which get mature at the time of diwali because diwali is a big festival and people want to spend money but why in the beginning of the school so women said that you know schools because in india for government schools do not have a fee but they said that at the time of the opening of the school we need to buy a bags we need to buy a books for our children and we and we don't have money at that time so if we can save we can buy these it was so clear that when women have a control on finance and when women have when women decide where to spend they spend on their children's education so this is not only just providing an access it is also providing a control on finance and that's how mandishi bank designed the saving and credit product it was very interesting that you know while banking with women women came out with different uh, additional programs 
and i would like to share those can you have a next slide please so the another program which we started was and this was the first i mean i would like i am very proudly would like to share that this is the first rural women bank where in, in in such remote location we never had a women bank and when we started these product we saw that many old women would come to the bank and would save their invest in the fixed deposit and would request bank to give monthly interest many women would come regularly every month they will come in the beginning of the month and would withdraw the interest once i asked these women that for what are you using this interest which you are withdrawing from the account she said i i am i have a knee pain and i need a regular medicine and my kid i mean i have worked throughout my life my my sons are in mumbai and i don't get money in time so i have i saved the amount and invested it so that in the beginning of the month i can buy my medicine i felt she knows exactly what she wants and not only that but she is ready to plan for her uh, old age for her medicine so then we thought why not start a formal pension product for these women and we requested a mutual fund of in india which is uti pen, a mutual fund that why don't you design a pension product for these women now these women who actually save around 5 dollars a month for their pension where and they, that pension premium can be paid there was no such pension product which that low premium but we requested the mutual fund and to design that product for mandeshi and ours was the first bank to introduce the pension product for these rural women and i'm so proud to say that now the government of india has a national pension scheme which is the scheme which actually mandeshi had started before and now government has adopted it so i mean i just want to share that uh when when we think of inclusion of a poor people it is much more about an financial inclusion it is it is more about control on finance control on your spendings and not only it empowers women much more when i say empowering much more what i mean is that they are not vulnerable they are not dependent on their and not only that dependent on their families but they actually i uh, improve the lives of their family and so today nearly 7000 women are part of our pension product and i'm proud to see that bank license which was rejected because our women were non literate today mandishi bank is banking with more and more than 300000 women and uh, we have six branches of the bank and also mandishi has a foundation now the obvious question would be that you know why do we have a foundation um i would like to share the history behind that can we have a next slide please so actually what happened was that you can see this slide where there are you know there are some technology pictures are there the bus is there and it says that financial digital literacy and banking what happened with mandeshi is that many women would come and one of the women she said that i want to buy a cell phone and uh, i want to buy a two cell phone so our manager said that and so she wanted to take a loan to buy a cell phone so our manager said that why two cell phone so she said that i migrate and i uh, leave my kids for the higher education with my in-laws and during my migration period i want to be in touch with my family so i leave one cell phone with my children who are staying with my mother in law and one cell phone with me so that i can be in touch with them and then she said that i want to also don't know how to operate the cell phone so why don't you why don't bank teach us how to do that and then we realized that bank cannot do the training of all these things 
so we started the business school for rural women and when we started a business school for rural women we couldn't do it through the bank so we started a foundation and foundation started a business school for rural women where women can have a training and similarly because these women could not travel the distances so we started a a school on wheels and now we have six buses and foundation operates in at present it is operating in three states maharashtra karnataka and gujarat and we are planning to start our our operations in assam in four state of india and the whole model is that we provide the hmm. skill training yes you had some question somebody had some question no chetna ji it's okay maybe just a glitch in the technology okay okay so we have the training program where it's a, the skill and entrepreneurship trade training program but many women could not travel so we have this school on wheels where the bus has the bus has the skill training part where bus can be converted into the class and also at the same time provides the financial and digital literacy and it's not like just creating the awareness but women can actually do the transactions practically so we have a demo atm in the bus where women can do the transactions also do the mobile payments also and on other side women can get the entrepreneurship training women can get the skill training so that it's not only just like just an access to finance but it is also access to knowledge at their doorstep so that they can start the businesses they can get the loan so the whole model is such that it's not only just awareness it's not just training but it also is supporting women to become a successful entrepreneur and not while doing that mandeshi believes that whatever modern techno i mean women should not only own finance but they should have a ownership of knowledge also control on technology also and i'm proud to say that many of our women actually they are now doing after particularly after demonetization in india it's very interesting that you know when some anything happens like any disaster happens or any major decision happens in any country the most affected are poor people and that similar similar thing happened in india also at the time of demonetization everybody in, i mean you must be knowing that india went through demonetization uh, to curb the black money and um, and the prime minister of the our country actually banned the 1500 rupees note which decision was taken so suddenly on 8th of november being a bank when the we heard that decision we thought that we myself i mean my team cancelled all the program and uh, we we were not sure that what will happen in the field and when why would any poor person would have those um you know like big notes 1000 um, rupees note which is around i would say that uh, around 30 dollars so why would that i mean poor people would have that big notes they would have it because they would save it because in emergency if somebody is sick in the family they they would need to buy the medicine and after demonetization we saw that next day everywhere in the bank many women many old people would come and they would think that now we would lose our money and they were standing in a queue or they were selling their note at a cheaper rate which was such a hard earned money so then immediately we had to take some immediate measures uh, can you uh, move the next slide can yeah this is the bus Where, where bus has, as I explained, that how the different classes and the bus is structured, where the uh, 
um, women can learn this tailoring, women can have a financial literacy under the tent, they can, young girls can learn computers and laptops, and it moves around. So this is how the bus operate, the business school at the doorstep operates. Coming back to the um, subject of demonetization, I would just also would like, uh, so Mandishi has seven buses, and these buses are operating in different location. And I'm proud to share that how are we foundation can manage to have these programs. So Mandishi has the partners like we get the CSR funding from different partners as we are getting from COL also uh, for the young girls program. Similarly, for the bus, we get it from Unilever uh, for the business school from HSBC. Um, we have a uh, Partners like Accenture, British Asia Trust, and Cherry Blair Foundation. These are CSR funds are for our women entrepreneurs. Now, on this slide, you are looking at a very charming um, face of a lady with the earphone and the mic. Imagine what it is. It is actually a radio which Mandishi has started. And when we we started radio, the reason were very simple. I mean, to were that these women can share their stories, what are their challenges, and which their stories can motivate other women to actually start the businesses, save with the bank. But when we, after demonetization, we saw the use of radio was very different. Next day, we started uh, relaying the program on radio that, you know, who, whoever wants to actually uh, exchange the note they can come to the bank and with the buses also we went in india there are rural hearts weekly market takes place and in villages every village is linked with the one weekly market which takes place in one week and everybody do the buying and selling there and in india we have around seventy thousand weekly markets we have different products saving and credit provide the doorstep savings at the weekly market at the time of demonetization, our buses went into these weekly market and provided the services of exchange of notes. And all the program was relayed from the radio. Not only that, at the time of drought also, when we provide the water to the villagers, we announce on the radio that you know, at what time the water tanker is going to come to the villages. It's very interesting that the radio is used for all these services, but at the same time, Mandish has this shepherd community which has a very rich culture. They have their own music, they have the local folk song. These programs are also recorded on radio. And now we, I mean, for now nearly um, radio is operating for last six years. It is one of the one of the first radio which has been started in rural area which has been operated by women. And we have some very interesting women folk singers also who sing on the radio, who have never been to the school, but they, they have a treasure of folk songs, folk art, which is also preserved. So it's, I, I always feel that when, when, low in, when poor get an access to all these things, actually they have a talent. And if we don't provide an opportunity to these people, we lose the talent. And I'm so proud that, you know, all our women, they have so much of talent. They come to the radio, they give program, they come to the bank, they do start a new businesses with a very innovative idea. And um, they are our role models. I mean, we have women, uh, para vets, who have never, these women who have not even 10th grade, we have under the, our girls inspired program. Many of our young girls have become a paravets who provide the vaccines and insemination for the, the boats. And not, they go from door to door and provide these services. It not only helps them to earn the additional income, but it helps them to, I mean, when they get this training, they when they bring money in the family, it actually changes the status of their family, their own status in the family. It gives them the control on finance. It gives them the control on their body also. So these are the innovative program with which Mandishi, I mean, it's a sort of an inclusion, 
but this whole inclusion is more about not just you know providing an access but it is more about providing the control it is more about understanding you know using tapping the talent of these women can you have a, a further one? next slide please Can we have the next slide? Sorry, Chetnaji, it just takes a few seconds. Let me know if you see the slide now on your screen. Yeah. So I was talking about the um, GOAT program and how our young girls have been, you know, empowered. And you can see on the slides also that you have these uh, young paravets who are not only providing the vaccines and uh, in, in insemination, but also they have become a good doctor. And it's also like, you know, they are on the two wheeler, which is like, it gives them the different mobility, it empowers them uh, to deal with the technology. And uh, this whole journey from livelihood to entrepreneurship is very important. Not only just that this good go go doctor is one example, but there are different businesses which women run. So like, we have women who are running a grocery shop owners. We have women who are having a bicycle repair shops. We have women who are in textile and who are producing the sports clothes and they get the orders from the school. And it's also not only just, you know, having providing training, but linking them with a bigger market. Providing them with the banking servicing. Mandishi has a toll-free number under which, if women think, if women want some information about getting the licensing, if the women are in a catering business, they require a licensing for for this business. So that then the men, different mentoring is required. The legal mentoring is required, and Mandishi is providing this through the chambers of commerce. Mandishi has set up, it is from livelihood, is business school which provides the livelihood. Thanks, thanks right. Aruj. Uh, I saw your message. So, in the beginning is the training in livelihood. But what we want is that our women should become a successful entrepreneur. Because finally, these women entrepreneurs, they, they it does not even, they, their income increases in their house and education but they also do a job they also provide a jobs so that is the whole journey of Mandeshi where I've, I mean and now Mandeshi is aspiring to impact 1 million women entrepreneur in next five years and when I say impacting Chetnaji, um, I think the line just cut out for a second. If you're able to hear me, do you mind just repeating what you've just said? In a moment. Chatnaji, Sheree speaking. I just want to troubleshoot the audio. Are you able to hear me? If you if you are able to hear me, do you mind typing in the chat box? Unfortunately, we're not able to hear you from our side here. Well, I 
Chetnaji, may I just suggest um, for you to exit the GoToMeeting and come back in again like you did earlier? And perhaps we can make it work. OK, Bellington, it's good that you can hear me. We are experiencing some technical difficulties and Sharice is communicating with Chetna G to see whether we can uh, get her in and out. Uh, we can still see Chetna's mic is on, but we are not sure whether she can hear us. Um, Kunta or anybody who is uh, in India who can hear us, can you communicate with Chetna that the line is down? We can unfortunately not hear her. Um, but in the meantime, I'll head back to Cherise because I just quickly intervened there. No, that's great. Thank you very much, Francis. So while we're experiencing technical difficulties, um, we could open the floor to anybody who has comments. And I see some wonderful, inspired comments from our colleagues in Pakistan and Bidari, from Rafat and Aruj. And I also see a comment from Mustafa um, complimenting the inclusivity model. So I, I would like to welcome anybody who would like to um, speak up and comment on this and or if you have any questions to pose it to us now so that when Chetnaji comes back online, we can address those questions. I'm going to start from the top, um, from when the comments started coming in. Rafat, I'd like to invite you to make your comments and let us know what you've thought about the presentation so far. Uh, thank you, Cherish, for giving me uh, time. Uh, it's really like uh, overwhelming to hear Chetnaji and his experience and how she started from scratch and just helping a single lady. And now she's what she's doing. And, and, the, and the essence behind is like, she is uh, dedicated to it and she just want to replicate herself with every every woman she is working with that's like awesome awesome work and she is flourishing because she has such a deep and pure intentions to help and and bring positive uh, changes in women's life who are so marginalized thank you so much for like um, organizing this webinar i'm really happy to hear this thank you Thank you so much, Rafat. I could not agree with you more. As I listened to Ms. Chetnaji's presentation, I was inspired and I was nodding along because I felt that genuine um, and pure sentiment that you were talking about. So that is really powerful and I really appreciate it. Um, I just want to update uh, what we're seeing on the chat box now. Kuntal from India is trying to reach Ms. Chetnaji, um, but there may be some technical difficulties it seems like Ms. Chetnaji can take questions on the chat box. So I welcome anybody who has um, questions and comments to type it into the chat box. And we'll read it out here for everybody as well. Can we just find out whether Chetnaji can hear us? Uh, because maybe she can hear us and uh, we can't hear her. Then we can also talk. There are quite a few questions for Chetnaji, but while you are all reading and writing your questions, I also just want to join Rafat and uh, Cherise with their comments and uh, commending Chetnaji. And uh, Rafat, you couldn't have said it better. Uh, she's flourishing because her intentions are so pure. Uh, that that was so profound what you said yes if your intentions are, are pure and you just want to help other people and uh, nothing can come in your way and i think that is a great example for us all uh, who are also giving so selflessly you the partners wherever you are to 
empower uh, the women and the girls. Um, but I, I cannot, I mean, that, that statement you made, uh, it's really, it really it struck me uh, that it is so profound and it is so, so true. Because uh, look where uh, Chetnaji started with all of this and look where they are today. Uh, I cannot agree with you more. Uh, so I think now Chetnaji would have had time to read through the comments and uh, we, we, we think she may not be able to hear us. Uh, so um, Kuntal indicated he can't get through to them. Uh, but after Kuntal, she did write a, a message and say uh, whether there are any questions. So we hope she can uh, see the questions uh, and um, respond to the questions either in the chat box or uh, if she can try and go out and, and try and speak to us. Okay, thank you very much, Francis. I, I've just seen a message from Kuntal that she he got through to Chetnaji and she is trying to get back um, into the chat room after logging out. So we'll wait for a few minutes. In the meantime, there's so many amazing comments coming in from the chat box. And I think for the purposes of the meeting, we will read them out um, while we wait for Ms. Chetnaji. Uh, we started seeing comments from Rafat and Aruj from Bidari saying that it's such an inspiration. Um, Mustafa was also saying what a great model it is um, for inclusivity. Um, Mustafa is also saying that it's interesting to learn how the talents of the rural women are being unearthed just by providing financial support and accommodating skills training. It makes the women very smooth going with their plans and innovative ideas. I think Mustafa, you've also um, typed in a few more comments after that. Would you like to unmute your phone so that you can speak to your comments? Hello. Hi, Mustafa. We can hear you. Please go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Uh, hi, sorry. Uh, so I think. Uh, what I uh, learned from the presentation of Chet Nazi, it is uh, really exciting for me. Actually, as a student of business, uh, I found that it's truly interesting. But the thing is, a bank is providing the financial support. So traditionally, they provide the financial support. And the rest of the things depend on the, the woman or the client. So in this case, she uh, the Mandashi Bank is not only providing the financial support, they're ensuring this that uh, the, this support uh, it creates some change or uh, adds some value to the economy, to their families, to that person, and uh, to the society as well. So, I think it is not only uh, to uplift the socioeconomic condition of the rural woman, so it can be a, a great model for the. Uh, development of the nation as a whole because uh, other banks they are suffering from a lot of bankruptcies so uh, if they follow these things so if they provide loans they cannot recover it because uh, the, 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 they don't know where the money is going so this model can be expanded even in the, the bigger uh, cases uh, like industrial investments too so thank you very much Charles. thank you Mustafa that's wonderful and I, I agree with you like you say this model has created an economy, their own world for these women to thrive. So it's it's a really powerful model that they've implemented and the journey to hear about it is amazing. Um, I see that you also had a question regarding business schools and advice from Ms. Chetna G. So after this webinar, we will create a forum on our community of practice where we can address these questions, given that we're facing technical difficulties. Um, so we will forward these questions and we invite you to join that chat um, after this webinar. Um, I will move on to the next comment and question on the chat. I see I see Mizzy from ADPP in Mozambique um, having a question as well. Mizzy, would you like to unmute your phone and speak to your question? Hello, thank you so much, uh, Sharice and Francis, for this uh, webinar. 
my question was just around how expensive it was to fit out the bus uh, the way it's fitted out for the different type of courses. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mizzy. That is that is a really good question. And it, you know, setting up the foundation and the business school, the mobile buses, to get those buses to the rural women who need them is so important. So this question as well, we will please we invite you to um, address and uh, post these questions on our community of practice after so we can um, continue this conversation because these are really important questions. And I think there's so much, so much to learn from here. And it's such a rich discussion. Um, I'll move on and see the next questions again from Rafat. How safe was, was mobile banking? Um, Afzal as well. Uh, commenting that it's really inspiring. Um, I, see quite, I, I see a comment from Arouge as well saying that it's deeply moved her and touched her. Um, how she has taken women out of their shells, provided employment opportunities to uneducated and helped them get the grants and loans for their business is a really huge work done. And I, I agree with you, it's really bringing the needs of women to those women and listening to those needs. So those are really powerful. Um, again, I'll open the floor to Rafat, who has also posed her question, just for the sake of everybody here on the line to hear that and to also contemplate over these questions that everybody is posting here. Yeah, uh, well, the, the question just stuck uh, in my mind when I saw a woman sitting in, uh, in a bank, uh, a bank representative sitting in uh, next to the vendor. Uh, a woman vendor uh, selling her uh, vegetables that was like how was that is like where the trust is needed the woman is earning for the uh, for uh, for like for the whole day and she's uh, giving her money to a uh, to a woman to another woman and uh, that requires quite a lot of trust and how they have built it uh, because where money is involved trust is what needed the most uh, that is how the, I just want to know from Chitnadi how she has managed and how she has trained her staff and everything. And and one thing that that was very uh, like good what she said she is providing ownership of knowledge and technology. That was like awesome statement from Chitnadi. She is like providing she is building a woman from by providing her knowledge and providing them ownership of knowledge and technology so they can't be lagging behind from anyone. That's brilliant. Thank you. Hi, Rafat. Thank you so much for your comments. Um, I've got Chetnaji on Skype here. And so we will try something quite new. And this is us improvising with technologies when things gonna kind of go not according to plan. So Rafat, would you mind just post, posing your question again and speak up? And we'll see if Ms. Chetnaji can hear you. Hello, hello, Chetnaji, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. And uh, wonderful to hear you any time and every time. Uh, yes, uh, I just I just want to ask when you started the idea of uh, this banking system from the day, uh, and the question just stuck in my mind when I saw a woman in front of a woman in front of this vendor, a vegetable vendor, female. She has earned her hard-earned money, and she is giving uh, to a banking lady. Uh, that requires quite a lot of trust and how you have created or your community has created that trust how you build that trust that i just want to know yeah very important actually you know when we were setting up the bank my i also myself was so tensed because actually you are not only just you are dealing with the poor people's hard-earned money and so how do you build up that whole so the first thing was that we had a local board 
and all every decision used to be taken in the board and so in from the beginning like going to reserve bank uh, asking for the license all that actually was uh, done much more collectively it wasn't like um, in the beginning as i said that i never thought i will be doing starting a bank so it wasn't just business plan and action, action plan it was more sort of a, a you know collective action that was one and second i would like to say is that when in the beginning when we started bank we used to have our field agent who were also women and they would do collect the savings and every day you know how much amount is being collected how many uh, everything was was one is that you whatever you do uh, how do you keep your things much more transparent when there was not the technology was not there so whenever we use the device and all so everyone should have a proof so these women many women used to do that also in beginning to test ourselves that they would say keep the receipt and next day they would come and they would say okay what is the balance of my account balance in my account and when they get the proper i mean the answers that's how the trust it takes time to build up the trust also when we started the pension product particularly um, what we saw was that when the women registered for the pension product we saw majority of the accounts what what we got most of the women were like you know 50 51 and now fund manager said that it's very difficult to have such a pension product where there is all the people are from the same age and so we tried to talk to women that why it happened that way and many women laughed and they said that we want to check that you know the, are we getting the amount when our pension product get matured and first 3 years it got immediately like we had to give the a matured amount to women. many women when they got their money back then they realize that yes we are getting our money back so there are different ways where you know one is that how do you how do you show that you know they should have a proof and based on their proof their accounts are being matched so that is one and then second is that they also test you and whenever they test you like when they are when their savings are getting matured or they are coming for the withdrawal and many times you have to uh, you have to do lot of work for them so say for example if if they are withdrawing uh, your whole field you, the our field agents were trained in such a way that uh, from the very first day when we started a doorstep banking we, you must have seen in the slide those device where the device had all the data and at the end of the day before the closing the day we sh we would transfer that amount to their account so that very next day morning if they want to check their balances they can check so these are the different ways where you actually develop the trust and in the beginning that was challenging actually but at the same time i think that uh, uh, it it is also about you know continuously talking to them whenever they have a question you are there to reply that and of course not individually one person but you have a team of women who are our team who are trained and who are answerable to them so these things are very important that uh, uh, you have to uh, deal with and uh, as far as uh, using the technology is concerned um, i think once that trust is built up and and how do people test you so that is that they would like to come and meet you directly and would like to say that okay i am investing this much of amount and how much interest i am going to get it and what dates i will get it everything has to be explained to them properly and uh, even uh, the terminology what you use so say for example like uh, when uh, there is a when women are saving so they would like to save diwali to diwali right so in the beginning many times it would happen that okay diwali to diwali means one diwali means the festival of light so one year which is 365 days but then you have to figure out that you know those dates and the festival should match 
so you tell them that okay you will get this much amount around this festival next year so the communication has to be very much done in such a way that the person who is delivering on the bank side even she is educated that does not i mean she has to communicate in such a way that the that our women understand and also women are very smart as far as calculations are concerned so i'll give you another example that in banking system everything is calculated yearly but when you talk to people talk to rural people they have a calculations of monthly so you have to explain them that okay how much interest are you going to get or you will be charged monthly they understand that terminology so we had to develop those things also and we used to have a like, like sorry go ahead uh please go ahead i just wanted to thank you for those powerful comments please continue no i am just saying that another thing which we in the beginning what we used to do is that we used to have a village meetings and so we had a field agent who would collect the savings right in india the postal service is also there and we would you you to know there is a term in the banking thing is mystery shopping which means that you have a one person who who check the uh, so one field agent she is doing a saving collection and mom, mom, so there is a sudden check where we tell our women that we will send our officers to see that your passbook balance and bank balance are same so the people those who are providing the banking service in the field they know that there is a monitoring going on and women who are savings they also know that there is a proper monitoring system is there in the bank but at the same time i would like to share that in the beginning we had to say that at any time if you have any question you can always approach us it's not that you know we are going to operate in 10 to 5 when you cannot contact us because these people had this uh, skepticism in the beginning and for to develop the trust you need to you need to give that much time Thank you so much for such a detailed answer. Thank you so much. It's so thanks. Nice. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, yeah. Chatterjee and Rafat. That was a really, really important conversation to have. How to develop trust, especially when money is involved. And we've heard that again and again, human relationships, that patience and understanding, and openness is really important to develop that trust. We have a lot of amazing com comments coming in on the chat box. I see one from Afzal Hossein um, from CMES in Bangladesh. Afzal, I invite you to unmute your phone and also make your qu comments or any questions you may have. Thank you, Sharif, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, I am really amazed uh, at uh, how uh, Chitta Madam had been explaining everything but uh, uh, one thing was very uh, impressive to me that how mandishi foundation have overcome their challenges and it was really very important uh, for example uh, 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 there was a the theme of physical uh, account book or cash book and the, if they uh, provide physical cash book or account book and then they the women may not have uh, proper control on their finance because anybody can access to that uh, physical account book and then they have uh, developed uh, a sort of alternative uh, contingency and uh, how uh, more control over the financial activities and transactions uh, may be developed and uh, another thing was also uh, providing rupee uh, debit uh, debit card and uh, then there was the question of uh, password and pin uh, pin number and anybody can access to that pin number and then they have developed a alternative solution to that that uh, biometrics and fingerprint and uh, thumbprint so uh, there are many uh, explicit uh, challenges uh, mandishi foundation has overcome and also the, there were many underlying challenges that we can uh, feel and assume and imagine 
because of uh, that uh, overcoming capacity of challenges the uh, Mandashi Foundation has overcome uh, their successes. And uh, thank you very much and heartfelt gratitude to uh, Chitna Madam for her wonderful presentation and the insight and realistic uh, explanation and uh, about her experiences. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Afzal. That was a really good summary as well, how they, how they took their challenges um, and made that as opportunities for innovation. So we will move on to the next question, being mindful of time and your time in the evening there, wherever you are. We'll take one more question and the rest of the comments and questions can be addressed on our online community of practice. And we will send that email to follow up after. Now I invite Mizzy from ADPP in Mozambique to again speak up her question, and then from there we will move on to closing remarks. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, Chetna. Uh, thank you ever so much for this wonderful and so informative uh, webinar. I just wanted to find out how uh, how how expensive it is to fit the buses the way that they are, to put all those costs, uh, uh, materials and facilities in the bus. Okay, so um, uh, as far as bus program is concerned, actually uh, the initial installation cost is very high. Uh, like to have, one is that, uh, you know, when you, it's not only just uh, the bus, but the inside you have a tailoring machine and you create a classroom inside, you have a tent and all that. So the first time cost is very high. How Mandishi has been operated is that uh, we have a supporters who support the foundation uh, business school on wheels. And we have a partnership with Unilever, Hindustan Unilever. We operate in their areas and we have a regional partnership with them. So they provide the support for the bus. Now what we do is that as far as operational cost is concerned, we plan the bus, uh, uh, I mean, the calendar in such a way that at least in one day on the same route, we can do say two or three villages. And in each course, we tell that at least 20 women should participate and they have to pay the fees so that whatever Say some say for example three courses are going on, and if our women are participating, at least we try to see that the diesel cost is taken care of by the fees, so that the recurring cost is reduced. Uh, but then uh, the installation, the capital expenditure is there in the bus, but at the same time the number of people you can reach through bus is much much higher than. Uh, otherwise you would do in the office and another cost which is reduced is that these women whom otherwise they would have spent their money for the traveling which is not being spent right so on the one side yeah the bus goes to the villages uh, but we don't have a, a fixed cost and at the same time bus can go to the three location on in a one day so that actually, instead of having the cost of three location, this bus is taken care of. That is one. And the calendar is such that in each village, the, the route is route at the three center is, uh, I mean, that is designed in such a way, the bus calendar is designed in such a way that at maximum number of women can be reached in one day. And bus goes to each village at least for 15 days so that they get the full training. And once they get full training, then they can also start their businesses. So this whole bus program is also linked with the schools, with the young girls. And where these young girls in India, like in villages, there are schools to not have computers. Or if computers are there, it is like one or two computers, even they are not in an operating state. Many times there is no power. So when uh, even the computer classes, it does not make sense if power is not there. 
bus also has not only just laptops but also connectivity so all these acts, it's also providing all these things at the doorstep and you know a village young girl if she can operate on computer it's not only just it helps to increase her knowledge but it gives her a confidence to deal with the technology so yeah coming back to your question about uh, the expenditure of bus i would say that you know if it goes to three location the the cost of three location together uh, though the initial installation cost is high but with the fees and everything the recurring cost uh, is reduced but on the other side which if the bus would not have been there uh, those women who are on the remote location would never had an opportunity to get this access so i think that uh, social uh, um, capital uh, is very high the social return is much more higher than the expenditure Thank you so much, Chetnaji, and thank you so much, Mizzy, for your question. Uh, Ms. Chetnaji, before we move on to closing remarks, I would just like to take this opportunity to thank you very much for sharing with us your passion and your insights. It's really appreciated and inspiring. To everybody, I invite you to um, tweet on our webinar today and continue this conversation and share this really important information to others and in our networks as well so that we can reach more women and girls through through this model. And without further ado, I'd like to pass it on to Francis to make the closing remarks. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Cherise. Thanks. Thank you, Cherise. Thank you, everybody who have joined us for this session. Um, I also want to, although very late at this point, apologize for Ms. Daisy and the majority of the team at, CF, at CMES in Bangladesh who couldn't join us because it started today. Unfortunately, um, they could not join us. But thank you all who joined us, even some of you who are involved in, in the religious festival I see outside here. Thank you so much. Uh, Chitna Ji, when your line was, was down, somebody made a, a very profound statement, and I think I want to close with that. Rafat from Pakistan said that uh, Chitna's intentions are pure. That is why she is flourishing. So I couldn't agree with her more that the reason for Mandeshi Foundation, Mandeshi Bank's progress and uh, uh, success has to do with your intentions when you started it. It was pure you from then up to today when we listen to you, we can hear it's not about you. It's about the women, it's about, uh, as you said, uh, put the control of their money uh, in their hands, making sure that they are in charge, making sure that they are not, as you said, so vulnerable so that they can make those decisions and make these changes within their families. So I want to thank you uh, for making the time. We know you are very busy um, and uh, making the time to speak to us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, you won't know how much it means to us as a team here at Girls Inspire, but also uh, by extension, our teams in the field. Um, these inspiring words, uh, the way you, you, you started it, the, the examples you gave us. Uh, although some of us may want to do exactly that, we cannot do it at this point, but we know in many, many years from now, there will, will be some other Mandeshis within other countries across the globe because of the inspiration uh, that you have been handing out for as long as you have been doing this. Thank you so much. And thank you also uh, to your son, Fat, who supported you in the background uh, and whose phone we called uh, when we realized there is a technical glitch. Thank you so much once again. Thank you, everybody. The recording of the session will be sent to you all by Cherise. We will also send it to Chetnaji. 
So if there's anything else, Jet Naji, you would want to respond, you are welcome to do that uh, within an email and uh, ask one of your colleagues to send it to us and we can post it on our community of practice. Uh, this webinar will go on our YouTube channel uh, where many more people across the globe can listen to it. So thank you very much, everybody. Good night, good evening, wherever you are. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.